Now in its 10th year, this is GabNet. Talk like you've never heard it before. Hey, live from Harlem in New York City, I'm Alex, and this is The Ramble, and we go until midnight tonight. Ladies and gentlemen, ladies and gentlemen out to the other coast of the United States, uh, to San Frangima, California, it's the lovely music of Larry Bubbles Brown. Hello, Larry. Hello, Alex. Yes, it's uh, lovely out here. Our city's decaying, and uh, I think San Francisco's motto should be, at least we're not Oakland, which is <laughs> really, really, it, it's so bad over there, the FBI raided the mayor's house in Oakland. Now. Did they really? <laughs> yes, that's how corrupt it is over there. I never liked Oakland, did you? I did, like, in the 80s, but now it's getting dangerous. It's, uh, they, they've actually changed, they changed the Oakland Airport to the Oakland-San Francisco Bay Airport, hoping people think it's San Francisco because it's got such a bad reputation now. So it's called the what now? It's called the Oakland-San Francisco Bay Airport or something like that. They, they put San Francisco in the Oakland Airport name. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah, well, I mean, it's it's a, not a bad airport. I've flown out of there a lot of times. You know, it used to be great when it was really small, but now it's really crowded and not as easy to get in. It used to be really easy to get in and out of. Yeah. Yeah, but uh, I, uh, I I always I always liked it uh, as an airport, but you have it was to go a great airport, and, and you don't really have to go through Oakland. You kind of go over Oakland. There's a, a yeah. Skyway. Yeah, yeah, that's that's where Amelia Earhart. Took her took off on her last flight from Oakland. Really? Uh huh. Hmm. There's got to be a joke there. I <laughs> She. I guess death was better than returning to Oakland. Something like that, you know. Yeah. Was she supposed to come back to Oakland? I think so. Really? She was kind of hot. Yeah, yeah, she was. Um, but she kind of looked like a lesbian. But I. Well. <laughs> He was married to the publisher, Putnam. Yeah, maybe? yeah. Was it Putnam? I'm trying to remember who's the pu- publisher. But she was married to a publisher, and he financed her whole flying thing and everything. You know, and she was a she was a she was her own little business. Amazing woman. Amazing woman. Um, where did where did she die exactly? She the the. Somewhere that they're still looking, they're like you know, keep coming up every year. We think we found her, but they never do. It's uh, out in the uh, way out in the middle of the Pacific. Uh, it'd be impossible to find. Well, they they was she was supposed wasn't she supposed to land somewhere and she just never did. It was, uh, some little island. Yeah, she out never there. made it to the destination. And yeah. And uh, you get lost over an area the size of the United States, it's kind of hard to find you. Yeah, and she was very famous. She started a luggage company. <laughs> <You know>? <laughs> <laughs> um, but uh, she she was uh, she was very popular. She she was like uh, people followed her adventures basically. Well, aviation back then must have been such a big deal because there were so many famous aviators like Lindbergh and Earhart and. Yeah, yeah. Um, uh, 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 there was well, there. Yeah, she was. She came in on the on the ta- coattails of Lindbergh, because Lindbergh got so well known because he flew the Pacific, all the Atlantic uh, solo. Uh, so then here comes uh, the female version of Lindbergh, mm-hmm. and she had all her little adventures, and everybody was following them, and so on and so forth. And I, it, it, her publishing husband had something to do. Uh, he had a lot to do with financing her, but he had a lot to do with the publicity behind her. So all these things that she did 
were to enhance her popularity and notoriety okay, so to sell they were making money then. to okay. sell luggage to sell <laughs> product you know uh and she was not above that i mean you know but um how many people know of amelia Earhart now uh probably very few you know i started thinking the other day about people you know that we know, and it's we can't conceive that anybody doesn't know who they were. But if I mentioned to a young kid on the street here the name John Lennon, he might not even know who John Lennon was. No, no, because kids are usually never involved in that which went on before they were born. Which right, I, I, I talked to younger comics, and they have never heard of Johnny Carson. What? Yeah. Well, I guess it's been a while, hasn't it? Let's see. He went off the air in 92. So that would make... So, yeah, I meet these comics that were born in the mid-90s, yeah, so I guess they wouldn't know him. That's like 30 years ago, isn't it, that he went off? Yeah, 30, uh, 32 years ago. 32 years ago. And Yeah, well, I, you know, I can see how they wouldn't know who he was. They know who Letterman is, right? Uh, kind of, although I think he's, he'll be out of their head pretty soon. Yeah. It's amazing, you know. And people always say to me, well, you got to come back to San Francisco and do your show again. Right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. And I go, well, number one, lightning doesn't strike twice in the same place. Okay? I could only fail at it. Okay? That's it. I only, it's the only different option available to me. Uh... But also the fact that, so I go back, and, uh, you know, 50% of the population in San Francisco is going to go, well, who's he? <laughs> well, I think if you came back, though, and do a, did a live show, you'd, get all, uh, you'd fill the place up yeah, with all Yeah, but we would have so many old people there. You know. need a lot of oxygen tanks. Yeah, you'd need a lot of oxygen tanks. You know, I watch this thing. There's this thing they do. It's really embarrassing, and I got to say this, and I don't know if anybody's going to hear me say it, but they have this thing called the uh, San Francisco uh, Radio Historical Society. Okay, and what they do is they, among other things, this historical society, is they uh, they they have old radios they sell, and they you know they. They, do, they but they get together one year for Radio Day on the Bay, and they hold this thing, and there's nothing but just absolutely old people there <laughs> in the audience. I've seen these things on YouTube, and you know, it, it, I, since I'm a member of the Hall of Fame, which is kind of part of this organization, I take a look at it, and it is just so pathetic, guys. It it's just embarrassing. Really? <laughs> yeah. It's really embarrassing. Uh, you know, and it doesn't get very many viewers either. But, I mean, it's just, uh, they, they do, they get, they do radio plays. Um, they had this, uh, the uh, Royal Society Jazz Band or whatever, orchestra, uh, which I liked a few years back, maybe 15 years back. They were really good, but now they just sound like they're tired of playing this fucking music. You know, and the whole thing is just embarrassing to watch. And, <laughs> and you know, if they take a shot at the audience from the back, there's so many bald pates there. You know, <laughs> and 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 then Ben Fong Torres is trying to do something, and then they got uh, uh, what's his name? He used to be a competitor of mine. Uh, uh, in the morning. Yeah, we did the. It was a cover of a magazine we were on. Uh, Terry McGovern, Terry McGovern. And this Terry McGovern at, at doing, uh, emceeing the thing, and just it's pathetic. <laughs> okay, it is just pathetic. And I'm I, I'm here to say to those people at the Bay Bay Area Radio Historical Society or whatever it's called, give it up already. Well, they're probably uh, gonna, they're probably going to take back my Hall of Fame now. But it was such a great medium. I'm sorry to see it uh, 
kind of die. Radio doesn't exist anymore. Radio, you know, even radio that does exist is existing because it is now porting everything they do to the Internet so that people can pick it up on the Internet. But, you know, to think they're going to pick it up off the, uh, off the ether, as we called it, is kind of asking too much. In fact, you know, things have changed so much that the radios they put in cars these days... Uh, they're not, uh, they're not, they only do uh, FM, not AM. Yeah, I think there's a, actually a bill to change that because I think AM is actually a very good thing to have in case of an emergency. Well, the thing is, AM is, uh, has a, it's a much more robust signal in that it can go further, it can penetrate further, and so on. And even at low wattage, it can still be very effective, whereas FM is a very fragile signal. Yeah. That uh, it just it doesn't have it has nothing with fragility. But the reason they've I, the reason they've taken the FM off of car radio or the AM off of car radios is because I think they interfere if you have an electric car. With the workings of an electric automobile. Yeah, I think you're right. I don't know what it is. It's some kind of signal that it's coming. It's coming into the car. So in electric vehicles, they only have uh, FM, and you know you can get things like uh, Sirius XM, things like that. You know, that's available to you. Uh, there's where you get all your music. But most people don't need it. For music, they don't need to go to radio. They just have a, they have all the music on their, uh, on their iPod or their iPhone. iPod. They don't even make iPods anymore. Look at me, pops. <laughs> Not like the old days where you go down to a record store and actually listen to the record before we buy it. <laughs> Were you alive when they still had the listening rooms? At record stores, I remember they had one in the, it. Uh, it was out at Stonestown, yeah. And they uh, they had a little. I didn't use it, but I saw these people that go into this little booth and with a forty five. I think. <laughs> well, no, there was a whole a whole row of booths actually in most record stores, or maybe three or four of these rooms, and then you would go in there and you would play a record because that's how they sold records in those days. It wasn't like radio stations necessarily were making them popular. And you would people were going, oh, I want to hear this latest record by so and so. They would go in and listen to it, and if they liked it, hopefully they would buy it. But uh, they, uh, the whole thing about listening booths f- fell away as kids, t- the teenagers started to have their own culture, and uh, they just wanted to go in there and listen to the music and dance to it, and they didn't, they didn't want to <laughs> buy the record, you know. So they did away with that. So the listening booth now or in, for music is radio, or in most cases now the Internet. And that's where people hear something and say, hey, I like that, I want that, you know. So, eh, what the hell. You know? Yeah, it seems, it seems to be gone. Remember the old, uh, they'd always have the top ten records for the week, and I, I don't hear that anymore on radio or anywhere. They they do list them, but they list them by uh, genre, you know. Like there's the R and B list, there's the uh, 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 country list, there's the pop list, whatever. Uh, and um, that's what they're doing now. And they only do that in things like magazines, like Billboard, and and so on, so they can let people know, hey, here's what's selling, here's what you should be stocking in your stores. Uh, are, they, I don't, are there record stores anymore? I don't think so. I don't think so, no. I mean, Virgin went out of business, if I remember correctly. You know, and I can't, there isn't a Tower Records anymore, is there? Uh, long gone. There used to be one at uh, Bay and uh, Columbus. Yeah, that's the one I always went to. That was a good one, but... Uh... Oh, in the middle of the night, I go down there and I start going through it and buying music. And, you know, uh, the only thing I couldn't stand were the people behind the counter. Yeah. 
because they all they did have an attitude yeah well i oh you always wanted to shake them and say hey, listen pal you know you're only selling music you're not in the music business i know <laughs> yeah. and i i you know there uh, one who was it uh piers remember piers adora yeah yeah um uh, where where they all the joke was that piers adora Married Ronnie Lott, would her name become P. A. Lott? <laughs> anyway, um, she uh, she was a very bad actress, a sexy woman, but a bad actress. And all of a sudden, she puts out an album of music, singing, and so you go, oh, "This has got to be terrible." And you listen to it, and you go, "She's good." Really? <laughs> yeah, she's good. So one day I go down to uh, the Tower Records at Columbus and Bay, and it's like uh, 12 o'clock at night, and I can't find Pia Zadora anywhere. So I ask at the counter, uh, where can I find Pia Zadora's newest album? And they said, you want to buy that? And I'm thinking... What? You know, are you the guy who's, like, reviewing the music for me? <laughs> I said, yes, I want that. Have you heard it? And they went, no. I said, she's damn good. You know, but then again, she sang, like, standards, and, and a lot of people don't care about standards anymore. You know, a lot of great music was written back in the 40s, especially 40s and 50s. And um, it, it, people very rarely know of that music, you know? It's amazing. It's just amazing. Yeah, God, that's a... Was she married to some rich guy that pushed her career? What was his name? I'm trying to remember. Yes. Yes. Yeah. I don't know if she's married to him anymore, but she married this very rich old fart, I think, if I remember correctly. And he uh, he paid for getting the records made and everything, and she was really she was really good. Um, She's still alive. Well, let me ask. Uh, um, Echo, is Pia Zadora still alive? Okay, she's still alive. Echo, how old is Pia Zadora? Echo, how old is Pia Zadora? Echo, how old is Pia Zadora? Pia Zadora is 70 years old. 70 years old. Yeah. 70? God. Yeah. Mm-hmm. What is Pia... Echo? Oh, God. She's having a hard time hearing me today. <laughs> Echo, what is Pia Zadora's net worth? He's worth $25 million. Jesus, God, really? Okay. And uh, Echo, who is Pia Zadora married to? Pia Zadora is married to Michael Jackson. They were married since 2006. Oh, it's a new guy. Uh, looks like she married as a black guy, I think. Anyway, she's the worth. Old tw- guy must have, the old guy obviously died. <laughs> and left her all that money, worth $25 million. Well, I guess, I guess the guy the guy at Tower Records can't laugh at that, can he? Now, how many people out there, raise your hands, don't know who Pia Zadora is? See, I told you, nobody knows who Pia Zadora is, except maybe you and me. I, I didn't know she was a good singer. I remember, I know I saw her in the 70s on TV, but I don't know what she was doing. Yeah, yeah. She, she was pretty sexy at the time. You know, she was this little... She kind of what I call zoptic. She had a little little baby fat on her, you know. But she looked great, you know. I I would have done her. Yeah. Of course, it's not saying anything. I would have done mud back then. So you know, it's not. Yeah, with, a, with male sex drive, we would have done warm pumpkins. Yeah. <laughs> oh boy. Well, just wait till you get to be my age. You get your dignity back. You know, I, I kind of have. It's like I don't have much of a drive. I, I'll, I'll, like, see a really pretty woman. I go, wow, she's attractive. But it's not like, oh, my God. 
Yeah, but you, don't you meet a woman, for instance, you know, you're out there, you're doing comedy all the time, you're in bars and so on, and, and women are there, and they must come up to you and start chatting you up, you know? That happens, yeah. Yeah, but, uh, and aren't there any of them that you go, hey, you know, I kind of like this person, you know? I, I, I just say that, man, I just realized, God, I probably wouldn't have... If you, even if I were younger, I wouldn't have a chance with some of these women, so why even think about it? Well, I never I never went for what I called those women who are supposedly unattainable for the same reason. I, I just feared rejection. Right. But I, I, you know, I went with some very attractive women. You know, I'm married to one now. Uh, looks well, great. Well, someone said that... Uh, People, Marilyn Monroe, and people, uh, they actually were attainable because nobody thought they would go out with them. So they, they said they were never asked out, and she wound up going out with some very mediocre guys. Well, it isn't a question of mediocre. It's a question of uh, maybe she was finding guys who had a little more substance to them than the guys she would normally go after, mm -hmm. you know. I mean, I I was never one of those guys, you know, who had, uh, I, I mean, I, let me put it this way. If I didn't have radio, I would never get laid. <laughs> exactly. Okay. Same that, way that, I felt about comedy, yes. Yeah. I mean, you know, all of a sudden I looked a lot better to women because I was doing the radio thing. But then again, I, I became very paranoid about that. And if I sensed that any woman was only going out with me because I was Alex Bennett on the radio, then I didn't want to go out with them. Yeah, if you're famous, you'd have to be careful. And I think although with radio, women fall in love with a voice. So that that was a lot of power being on radio. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, for a long time, nobody knew what I looked like. And that, that helped. You know, <laughs> um, but uh, then I did TV and stuff like that. So everybody knew what I look like. But somehow, you know, if you're successful in show business, you suddenly become uh, attractive. OK. Oh, sure. I mean, a lot of people in show business, if they weren't where they were, probably would not be considered terribly attractive. No. So anyway. You know, I, as I say, pe people say, why'd you go into radio? I said, well, for the free records and to get laid. <laughs> well, how'd it go for you? Well, I have a lot of free records. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I mean. Well, if you want to feel old, on August 5th, Mar Marilyn Monroe will have been dead 62 years. So she would be how old today? She would be uh, 98. Wow. Wow. <sighs> and and we all remember Marilyn Monroe. And I think probably people today, kids today, probably know who Marilyn Monroe is because she's kind of iconic. Yeah, I think they hear the name for sure. Yeah. Uh, I mean, some people... Be, to die young is actually a blessing in show business. Oh, yeah. Because you then are preserved at that age. We never James watched. Dean. We never watched Marilyn Monroe get to be ninety-six. You know, uh, yeah. uh, we never wa watched uh, James Dean become an old man. James Dean could have been like fat and seventy-five and doing some shitty sitcom. <laughs> well, I said to the guy, uh, the guy who did uh, did um, uh, what was that show? Oh, that weird show. TV. I'm trying to remember it now. See, when I push to come up with something, I can Twin Peaks. And uh, it was done by uh, that uh, director, but also another guy. And I'm trying to remember what his name was, but I had him on the show. And I said to him, I've always had a big argument with people. I said, you know, if, if James Dean had lived, I thought he would wind up on Twin Peaks. And the guy said, Absolutely. He said we would have hired him to be the the guy who runs the uh, the hotel, you know. Oh, cool. Yeah, yeah. I remember that. Yeah. yeah. He said definitely we would have he would have been on Twin Peaks. So I I had my feelings verified, you know. I was happy with that. But you know. Anyway. So we got about a minute left here. And is there any gig you want to plug? 
Uh, <laughs> well, the uh, let's see, uh, August 17th is the uh, rescheduled Lodi gig at the Michael David Winery. Okay. If it's if it's not going to be 114 again, and that that will be with uh, the great Steve Heitner who played uh, Kenny Banya on Seinfeld. Oh, okay. The best, uh, Jerry. The best. Min- the best. Jerry. Min- Mindy's is the best. You know. Funny. <laughs> that might be the funniest uh, secondary character in sitcom history. <laughs> <laughs> right. He was hilarious. <laughs> Kenny Banyan, who was also a comedian who could never get laughs, but somehow he always won up Jerry. Yeah. Uh, anyway, hey, listen, uh, time to go. Time to go. Uh, we'll see okay. you. I'm we'll glad s- your root canal's over. Yeah. Well, by this time, uh, when this plays, a root canal should be way over. So I'm happy about that. And uh, we'll talk to you next week. See you then. Harry Bubbles Brown, ladies and gentlemen. Dang. Now in its 10th year, this is GabNet. Talk like you've never heard it before. Oh, yeah. There he goes, ladies and gentlemen. That's Larry Bubbles Brown. And uh, Larry will be back again, I'm sure, next week. Uh, We record a bunch of those on the next Tuesday, I guess. Uh, and, uh, you know, I did what I did yesterday. You know, I did um, um, Mike Chisholm. And uh, I thought I'd do one with Mike Chisholm, and that would be it, and we'd all be happy. And He'd go home happy that he had been on the show and all that. And it was so good. I did three of them. So now I got a bank of three of those, and then I'm doing tomorrow, I'm doing Albert Reynoso, banking two of those. And uh, then I'm doing Bubbles on uh, Monday, on Tuesday, and I'm banking two of those. And then I'm doing Lori Thompson on Wednesday, and I'm banking two of those. So I got more people, more interviews than I, I think I'll use in a lifetime. Okay? Anyway. How are you, ladies and gentlemen? You're out there. You're, uh, you're, uh, you're watching uh, the, uh, wor- the most ridiculous world go by, weird stuff that's happening. Uh, I, I can't tell you how weird it is, okay, all the way around. It's bizarre. It's bizarre. That's what they say up in, uh, up in uh, 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 Boston. Bizarre. It's bizarre. Okay. Anyway, we should probably let a bunch of people in here, okay, and uh, let them, uh, 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 let me see here. I just admitted them all, but I don't want to impress it hard enough. Okay, there we go. There's Charlie Wallace. And uh, there's Jeff, and uh, Roberta's coming in here, and uh, let me see here, uh, Vernon Dunn. Uh, Is that? We're trying to get him, him joining. Oh, there we go. You, you're doing it again there, Jeff. Jeff, you're doing it again. I'm not, man. Oh, okay. You're fine now. You're fine now. Okay. Had a little bit of problem there at the beginning, but, mm. you know, I don't know. Survive it, you know. Whatever. Anyway, uh, let me uh, let me say hello to uh, Jeff. Welcome to our show, uh, Charlie. Charlie, what does it say on your chest? <laughs> it says it's all fun and games until somebody loses an eye. Boy, that's a rough one. <laughs> the square root of minus four is two i. Oh, okay. Two. Oh, two okay. <laughs> Where do you find these things? <laughs> I searched the internet for him. Uh, Roberta's <laughs> here, and Vernon Dunn is there, but he's not. We don't have a, a camera on nope. you, Vernon. <laughs> there you, women. Oh, we just lost. No, he him. went away. Now he went away. Yeah. What the hell? Anyway, hello everybody. How are you? <clears throat> it, it's Friday, <laughs> and I was. Uh, I was watching. Uh, I was watching uh, Waltz give a speech tonight, and the beginning of uh, uh, Kamala Harris uh, giving a speech, mm-hmm. and it was all well and good. However, you know, it's the same speech they gave the other day. You know, because what happens is they they create what's called a stump speech, and this is the same speech they give everywhere. So that if these networks decide they're going to run them every time that they are somewhere giving a speech, 
uh, they're going to keep hearing the same speech over and over again, and then people are going to get bored with that. So I think in this modern day and age, they should come up with several stump speeches, you know. But uh, still, uh, uh, Walls is good. He's really good. I mean, he gives a good stump speech. It's no question about it. Let's see here. Wait a minute. What happened to Brian? We lost Brian. He, he, he wow. You, you know why? Because he was trying to move his camera around, so I think we could see Adrian. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And uh, they saw for a second. Huh? Yeah. We yeah. saw her for a second. Yeah. But anyway, so that was what I was doing today. It wasn't much of anything, to tell you the damn truth. Here comes Kevin. Kevin, uh, yeah. There he, there he is. Hi, Kevin. How are you? Oh, his mic isn't on yet, I think. No, not yet. Not yet. Not yet. I hear you. Uh, let me see here. Okay. Well, we'll, uh, we'll just... Uh, we'll just uh, um, <laughs> Let me see here. I'm trying to get things right. There we go. That's good. Okay. So uh, let me I'm see. I'm having a ball watching the Olympics. So I don't know about y'all. You're having a ball watching the Olympics? Yeah. How about that son of a bitch who, uh, the runner, who ran yesterday with COVID? Yeah. Right. And he got a bronze medal doing that. He should have his bronze medal taken away from him. <laughs> I really, I really feel that. I mean, come on, you're endangering other people, you know? It was outdoors. Huh? Well, it, it was outdoors. So it was outdoors. I mean, he should have at least told somebody, hey, I've got COVID, and see what they think he should do, you know? But he They're didn't tell him. anybody. Don't go. Huh? Who, well, they would have told him not to run. <laughs> yeah, well, Djokovic, for instance, you know, with tennis, he had uh, COVID, he refused to be tested for COVID. Yeah. Okay. And they, they dropped him from all the tennis uh, tournaments for a while there. Yeah, but that was back before we had a vaccine. Yeah. But I mean... Just in Australia. Yeah. Yeah. But this guy didn't have a vaccine, did he? I mean, we don't know. Yeah, but like he said, it was outside, and you don't transmit it that well outside. Well, yeah, we know, we, know we think that. we think that's true, but you know, right now, for some reason, I hear of a lot of people getting uh, getting COVID. Yeah, but it wouldn't be the transmission wouldn't be outside in the wind and all that. The transmission would be just remember Legionnaires' disease. I mean, mm -hmm. think of that ship where the co original COVID thing happened and we heard about that. I mean, it was coming through the vents. It was coming, I mean, just like with Legionnaires, you, you, oh. you go in the wide open spaces and there's more than just COVID hanging out in the outside spaces, but it just disperses. It's okay. It's That's why Florida, why do you think, you know, in Florida, they defied the vaccine and they defied all of the Okay, other... but wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. I'm going to argue with you on something. Okay. You say, outside, we got the wind and everything. Yeah, you got the wind so it can blow it in your face. But it disperses and it drops to the ground very the quickly. Are we sure of that? Well, it's not just COVID. It's all of the various diseases that they test yeah. for. It's the same thing. As long as it's not lighter than air and COVID, they already knew that it was not. In fact, something that was not publicized very much. I read a bunch of the papers during, you know, the scientific papers during COVID. And I got to tell you, nobody told us this except for the scientific papers, but the media didn't report on it. What they found was that because it's so much heavier than air, that the biggest concentration of COVID was on the ground. And that when you walked in it, if you, you know, if you took your shoes and then you walked inside your house, you were going to get more COVID germs from that than, uh -huh. you know, something else. And, and not only that, but it's not just the walking through in your shoes. It's that any surface area where it can fall on, it was the falling on, not the breathing yeah, well, in your I, face I, unless I, somebody I, breathed I, in your yeah, face. I, uh, I tried to read a lot of the literature of the time, but mm -hmm. it was hard to do because it had snot all over it. <laughs> It was also very new, as we all know, and yeah. it was learning. Yeah, but it was learning. But still, I, I just think it's irresponsible. I mean, if I know that I, for instance, a good example, uh, John Stewart has COVID. 
That's why he didn't do the Daily Show this week. Oh, I was wondering. Yeah, he has COVID, so he didn't go into work. Right? Yeah, but that's in that's indoors. I that's wouldn't want him near me too. either. <laughs> You know, he could have worn a mask, or he could have said, uh, "You know, I've only, I've only yeah, got." But a, you know, touch how many it. people do you know that get sick and still go to work? Uh, a lot. Too many. <laughs> yeah. Well, how many people get sick and don't use that as an excuse to go to work? Correct. You know, you know I mean, you go it goes both uh, ways. I've got a cold. Good, I can stay home today. Exactly. <laughs> You know. I've got COVID. <laughs> I got a touch I of think. the COVID. Got a touch of the COVID. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, but it's you know. But I mean, I just, I just thought, of, I thought it was inconsiderate. I think he should, at least should have said to somebody, "I've got COVID. Can I still race?" Right. I think I have enough breath in me to do it. He really didn't. That's why he lost. Well, he, he almost get... collapsed at the end of them. They had to cart him off in a wheelchair. Yeah. Yeah. What That's was that, the 400? Right. Yeah. That was a 400, yeah. wasn't it? Yeah. What was his yeah. name? Uh, 200, I think. It was a two. He won the 100, and he came in third in the 200. What was his name, Lyles? Yeah. 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 Lyles. Lyles, yeah. Noah Lyles. Noah Lyles. So anyway, you know, I mean. It's, and he is fast, but he wasn't fast that day. Well, yeah, I mean, you, you try running with COVID sometimes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> Smoke a cigar first. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, I mean, but uh, as I said, you know, I mean, uh, uh, you know, you just, it's it's just a, as a, I mean, he should have just asked somebody. And maybe the doctors would have said, you can run, just don't look in people's faces and wear a mask when you're out here before you start running. And when you run, then take the mask off and run and then put the mask back on. But he didn't tell anybody. So there was nobody there to give him guidance as to what he should do in that situation. Uh, or the people who carted him off uh, who didn't know. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. I can't remember if they had masks on or not, because some of the workers there did wear masks, but I don't know if those particular ones did or not. Well, also, I love, you know, the idea of having uh, a water sports and so on in the Seine. Uh, oh, God. It, it, no, it, 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 on the face of it is a beautiful idea. Imagine boats racing down the Seine. That's a really uh, iconic, uh, uh, bucolic, uh, what do you want to call it? It was terrific. Yeah. Okay? It's a wonderful idea. Um, but unfortunately, the Seine a is a sewer. <laughs> Okay, and they spent a billion dollars to not make it a sewer, but now it's the most expensive sewer in the world. <laughs> and they, um, in fact, some of the people who swam in it this week, because for uh, the first couple of days they were going to use it, they couldn't because it had rained, and the rainwater had sloughed off into the Seine and caused yeah. it to pollute the Seine again. So in 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 uh, it was, but all of a sudden they said it's okay now, you know, and people went in and they swam. They did whatever the swimming sports were, and now they've all gotten sick. Wow! Yeah, it was like a triathlon. Yeah, yeah. They were drinking uh, gallons of water or something and puking afterwards or something. Yeah. Wow. So I mean, that was a bad. A little bit idea. of diarrhea. Yeah, that was a bad idea. Of course, they couldn't do the surfing in Paris, so they had to do that out in Tahiti. Oh, yep. poor babies. But then, uh, what's his name? The guy who is uh, married to Scarlett Johansson uh, on from Saturday Night Live. Uh, Colin, Colin, Colin Jones. Jones. Oh, yeah, Colin, Colin Jones. Jones. Colin Jones. He had to go home because he got sick. Did he? Yeah. Mm -hmm. From what? COVID? No, he was just sick. He was probably just drinking too much. <laughs> no, it's probably I don't know. You know, too on. many mai tais. <laughs> Who knows? <laughs> mai tais. You yeah. can't have too many mai tais. No, I don't think so. Yeah, so they had a uh, they had a uh, what do you call it? A, uh, uh, a guy from Australian TV finish it off. Yeah. Huh? So, they did that, and then today was the break dancing competition. Oh boy! Oh boy! Well, you know, I that I see as a sport. I mean, there's a lot of energy and and uh, I can't do it. You can't do it. I can't do it. 
And, uh, oh, a lot, hey, lot harder than curling. Look, 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 who, look who's there. Look who's there. Oh, this what is it, having s'mores. What, 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 were you having, what, where, are you, where are you roasting marshmallows? Having s'mores, huh, Adrian? I can tell. <laughs> the, how's she make you? Oh, oh, there we go. There you oh. go. Where's the Hershey's? Well, actually, you're eating the marshmallow before it becomes a s'more. You're not supposed yeah. to do there that. There you go. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> oh, my God. What the heck? Yeah. 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 It's a little breezy tonight, so we may do it inside. So. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Bye. Looks like, like she's cooking it over the keyboard. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, she's uh, she's uh, she's. Uh, it's really windy. Actually, it's really windy outside. You just, we have a big, a couple big fire pits out there, but uh, we're not. Too, now, so this is big. this is your new place, and do do you have? Is it a is it a home? Is it? Yeah. Is it a home? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a, yeah, it's a big home. Yeah, it's a big home. I don't even go upstairs. It's like. 3,700 square feet. Yeah, I'm going to say, is this bigger than your apartment, 3,700 square feet? Screw you. <laughs> I say 2,500 square feet, and people say to me, well, that's bigger than my house. Yeah. yeah. And, uh, and but it's very inexpensive. Yeah, you have an it's indoor tennis court. <clears throat> yeah. <clears throat> it's very inexpensive yeah. here, and uh, it's a good asset right now, so. I got a good price for it. So. Oh, you got a good price for it, so it's a, is it, it's not a fixer upper, is it? No, no, no. This is a this is like a smart home. The, everything is on an app. So the pool, the pool, the waterfall, the fire, everything is on an app. The garage door is on an app. The lights are on an app. Like outside lights are on an app. I mean, of course, like the, the air, AC and all that stuff is on the app. Um, <laughs> the sound system is on an app. It's, wow. Everything is on an app. Brian, I just got a letter from AT and T telling me that all my stuff was hacked. <laughs> yeah, yeah, everything is on an app. So, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it, it, it's I, so. In other words, it's Wi-Fi. Is everything is Wi-Fi? Everything is on Wi-Fi. So it, it's like yeah. So when know. I got the house, I had to get I had to get the Wi-Fi, and then after that, I had to. Um, have everything canceled, so I had to call everybody and tell them that I'm the new owner. And uh, it's, it's hard. that's they're gonna have to do to my house because <laughs> I put all the dimmers, all the lights, all that stuff. Wow! Wow! Yeah, and then yeah. Uh, well, I put all yeah, my. Yeah, the Wi-Fi is working. I put the lights in this in the office uh, are on, you know, on Wi-Fi. Uh, these lights here <laughs> are on Wi-Fi. Uh, my air conditioner's on Wi-Fi. All the lights in the guest room are on Wi-Fi. Uh, let me see here. What else is on Wi-Fi? I got, I got yeah, a lot got, of stuff on Wi-Fi. You know? I've got, let me see here. i am got to see how many devices I got on <laughs> Wi-Fi. Remember, only the meek will survive. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so even your, even your refrigerator can be hacked. <laughs> yes, it can. Well, my, I can uh, hack my, into oh my, my neighbors. Oven. My my next door my next door neighbors washer and dryer come up on my phone. Well, my <laughs> my my uh, my uh, uh, oven, my stove, comes up and it's an app, it's a Wi-Fi, and uh, yeah. every now and then I get an, a message, a letter, email from my from my oven, telling me it needs to be cleaned. Mm-hmm. You know, I mean, come on. Do I really need that? You know, it's amazing. Something else to nag you. Yeah, something to nag me. But anyway, so, you know, it, it's uh, interesting. It's interesting. Uh, it, it, so everything you've got is Wi-Fi, basically, uh, in your home. I mean, can you turn all the lights off in the whole house by just saying turn all the lights off? No, you got to go nap. <laughs> you got to go to the app. Yeah, <clears throat> I did that I, one what, time. What I do is I do it through I do it through uh, Alexa. Yeah, I did that one time and everything went off. <laughs> yeah, no, but I have all my lights on Alexa, 
And yep. all most of my stuff on I have the uh, the air conditioner and the stove and everything on Alexa. So although I call it something else because if I called yeah. it Alexa, every time somebody would say Alex, it would do something, you know. <laughs> so I call it the other thing, the E C H O. Ah, thank God it can't spell yet. No. <laughs> Not yet. Yeah, pretty soon. Anyway, so, uh, so it's uh, it's uh, it's uh, what day is this? This is uh, this is uh, Friday already. Friday. Yes. Anybody? It's Friday. Remember when Marjorie used to be on the show for a little bit on Fridays? It's Friday. It's Friday. Yeah. Don't, don't she don't, she stopped wanting to stay up that late. Yeah. Yeah. You know. That's a great excuse for her. Yeah, that's a great <laughs> excuse. <with> yeah. <laughs> And, and so, I mean, she goes to bed around uh, 10 o'clock, you know. Uh, doesn't say account. What? You're talking to yourself, Kevin. Yeah, I do that all the time. <laughs> what are you doing? <laughs> trying to fix something? No, no, I was just looking. I'm looking for my total devices. I think it's like 72 or something. 72 devices? 72. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> I don't think he... Maybe it's 62. <laughs> trying to find the count. Yeah. Well, I mean, I mean, I, my, my, I got everything from my, you know, my dimmer switches to my pet feeder on. Well, there. yeah, but the, you may have a lot of IP addresses because you have, uh, you know, a whole bunch of things that are, you know. Yeah, there's a whole slew. Of like IP every address. computer I have is on a different IP address, so I that's. So Garden just got oh. up and he turned off his oh, lights no. manually after telling yeah. us all this. What is this? <laughs> 5054, 5062, 5011, 5121, 5122. All right, 5 all right, all right, all right. <laughs> Jeez, almighty God. <laughs> I still don't know how to use half of it. Really? Okay. So, I mean, did the house come with the Wi-Fi all set up like that? Yes. Yeah. The guy who owned the house before me, he has a electronic company. He mm. he does all. It's called Wired or something like that. And he does all these, uh, you know, wiring the homes and stuff. So, when this house was being built a few about three years ago, mm -hmm. he made a deal with the contractor. So before they laid everything in the backyard where the pool is, he they let him run all the wires for all the surround sound outside and TV outside. And then when they before they did all the drywall, him and the neighbor came in and drilled all the holes and wired up all the the sound in all the rooms, even the bathrooms upstairs. <laughs> it's so yeah. crazy. So let me ask That's you, what I did with this house when they were building and I snuck in and put all the wires on the walls. Oh, oh wow. Yeah. But now you don't need them. Yeah. So I got all these wires in there. You don't need them. My wires are all kind of just wired through the house on the baseboards. You know, things like that. 58 devices, not 62. That's okay. We we just still use sneaker net here. It's still stressing <laughs> me out. But there is a problem. Okay, and I had this happen a couple of months ago. Uh, the uh, uh, the uh, what do you call it? The Wi-Fi went out because the cable because hold on a second, I got blows my nose. Wait a minute, hold on. Ah, See, that's there we sort go. of the problem I'm having right now is now all of a sudden this one I have to have wired up to my phone to get a hotspot because it's not recognizing the Wi-Fi. My pool. Thing just went out because it's not showing the Wi-Fi. I can still set it up manually, but I'm trying to get it going again, and it doesn't show. Well, the here, here's so what this happened. This unit, I'm gonna take this unit back. Yeah, one night, uh, the uh, the uh, the uh, what do you call it? The uh, 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 internet went out. Okay, I couldn't turn the lights on. <laughs> yeah, and those that were on, I couldn't turn off. <laughs> well, you, you can turn them off with the switch. Well, you got to go over because some of the plugs, some of the plugs are are are, are regular plugs, and you got to turn the plug on and off at the plug itself. So, oh and, yeah, okay, that's right. It's those, just a pain in type, the yeah. ass. All of a sudden, we you know, our our lives were useless. Yeah, I took the switches out of the wall and then put in, you know, Wi-Fi switches. Yeah. So you can push push them if you don't have to. Oh, you have to put you can push them so you can turn them on and off if you if have you to. have to. Yeah, they, they're manual switches as well. Well, that's certainly wild, isn't it? 
Uh, but when the Wi-Fi does go down or if something goes down and you lose the connection, then you have to go around and re-sign in to every freaking one of them. Yeah. Oh, my God. <laughs> oh, really? If they don't come back, then you'll find out, well, that one didn't work. And you're telling Alexa, turn on the damn light and it won't go on. And you got to go over and reset it and re find it and all that stuff. So, well, if the Internet went out, I also wouldn't be able, wouldn't be able to do this show. I, you know, I wouldn't be able to do anything. Uh, I'm, uh, it's useless, you know. And then, and then you get the ring cameras. So I got cameras all over the house. This guy did, and the alarm system. So there's another five or. By the way, your fighting. your picture is freezing up on us, and it, you got fixed it last night somehow. It's too much stuff I on the Wi-Fi. Over a few <laughs> too much stuff on the birth. Wi-Fi. <laughs> yeah, you used up all his bandwidth right there. <laughs> That's what happened to me is I had to go get a you know a whole mesh system and boost that up to get it to work. Smoother. Really? Yeah. I got a mesh system, but I didn't like it. I, I like yeah. everything hardwired. Then it's yeah. no problem. When it's I'm, better, y- huh? It's I, better. It just hardwiring is just, it, it, to me, I mean, I learned this from doing television, that we would have wireless mics and we had wired mics, and half the time they'd say, we're getting interference, we're getting noise, yep. let's go to the wired mics. Yep. And you go to the wired mics, and there's very little that's going to go wrong with those. Yeah. But, you know, true. If, you, if you had to, you know, go wireless, it was... But do I want to climb around in the, in the upstairs in the attic and everything else and run the wires? No. Yeah, yeah, right. Well, I mean, I could go wireless here, but, you know, I've, I, I've added a lot of stuff here, though. In the last couple of weeks, I've really improved. I don't know if you've noticed anything, but the sound is better. Uh-huh. Okay. And the uh, the picture is better now because I just bought a new camera. You notice how sparkling and wonderful it is? <laughs> it is. Yeah. Has nice skin rendition, you know, all of that. Get closer, we can see your nose hairs. <laughs> Man, beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. <laughs> yeah, anyway, wait a minute. Now the picture changed color. <laughs> you just turned purple. Huh? You just turned purple. I just turned purple? No, I'm not purple. <laughs> there, yeah. I'm not actually nose print. purple. What? It's a nose print on the lens. Let me see here. <laughs> wait a minute. I can. Uh, I can now, now you're back. You're back. Now you're back. Oh, now yeah. I'm back. Oh, yeah, the color just came back, right? right yeah. Right. Uh, it, it didn't like my nose hairs. It was trying to white balance my nose hairs. Anyway, <laughs> so uh, so anyway, um, uh, last night um, I watched, did anybody watch Lawrence O'Donnell and the 15 minutes he did at the top of his show last night, blasting all the networks, including his own. Yep. For allowing Trump to get away with over an hour of of television time to just spew complete lies. He said there wasn't a, a sentence that he said in the whole two hour and a half that wasn't a lie. Yep. There wasn't a lie contained in it. And they, what he said was, we're making the same mistake we made in 2016. We're letting them get away yep. with the lies. He said these people were there. To begin with, he said the people there, we couldn't hear them asking the questions. But when we found out what they were, they were all softball questions except for one reporter, and he didn't answer his question. You know, And it, it was just, it was terrible. Uh, and he said that they let him get away with it. What they should do, we have wide screens. They could take the side of the screen and they could start running fact checking mm-hmm. as the speech goes on, saying he's lying about this and he's not telling the truth. I love that. Him. No, but that they should do that because the guy is a serial liar. He lies yep. in every sentence he puts out because he knows they're not doing that. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And, and the more dangerous part is not the lies. The more dangerous part is he gets to dominate the media. Well, but what, what, <laughs> the, the what he said was is that the problem with not fact-checking him at the moment is some of the networks afterwards did a fact-check. They started going through this thing and that thing and whatever. He said, but by then, the audience had left them. Yeah. Okay. So they and they've gone out to yeah. spread the word. Yeah. Yep. You know, and it, it only has to be stuff that, is, that you can absolutely prove. I mean, when he says he has a larger crowd 
than Martin Luther King had. Okay. By the way, he had uh, 52,000 people at that rally before they attacked the uh, the, the uh, Capitol. 52,000. Yeah. There were f at least five times that at the Washington Memorial speech for for uh, uh, MLK. Yeah. So, so, I mean, there's a lie right there. And they knew it was a lie. But the, does anybody stop him? Did any of the reporters in, in Mar-a-Lago question him on something like that? Say, wait a minute, how can you say that? It's not true. But the reporters would get... They, remember, if a reporter disputes him or starts to argue with him, they get booted. So, <laughs> well, that's you know, a nasty they, question. And they don't want to get booted. But what's more honorable, getting booted or not asking the question that's got to be asked, which is, is I'm sorry, Mr. Trump, uh, President Trump, uh, uh, that's not true. You know? Yep. I mean, none of them did it. Not one of them. And Modern that's what, journalism. And that's there what Lawrence is. O'Donnell was yelling about last night. He said, I'm yep. sick and tired of us giving this guy a pass. Yeah. I'd like to hear one person ask Donald Trump, where in the Declaration of Independence does it say pursuit of bigotry and retribution? <laughs> well, apparently it will be in there soon. <laughs> pursuit of happiness. Pursuit of happiness is what it says in the Well, actually, it doesn't exactly say that. It doesn't it says, say anything it, about it, it says pursuit of happiness. <laughs> it looks like that anyway. Um, That's but, the way they made an S back then. It, it, I guess. <laughs> or, or, yeah, I guess, yeah. It made it, uh, they put a little line through it. Yes, uh, Jeff. Oh, you need oh, to turn on your you, mic, Jeff. You, you, when I used to listen on TV, and I was, I don't know what, uh, 20 years old or something like that, the guys who were doing the shows, they would say, this is right, this is wrong. They, they gave you their own criticism mm -hmm. about what the president was saying, about what was happening, what was the German was doing, this and that. They were much more uh, communicative about everything. Today, it's all bullshit. Well, the reporters are afraid of getting booted out because then they will lose yeah. access to Donald Trump, and they don't want to lose access to Donald Trump because their bosses want them to have access to Donald Trump. And so, therefore, they So just have in... a backup. Huh? So just have a backup. Have a line of them. Okay, well, Bill's out. Well, send in Joe. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You know, have yeah. a line of them. Well, but I mean, you know? the, the point is, is that none of these people should be afraid of losing their job because they upset Donald Trump. Right. Well, you know, and, and, and that's what happens. You know, there, there's a there's a real problem with that. And and uh, I think this idea of in, uh, Trump has intimidated the press. That's what he's done. <laughs> And there's no reason for him to be intimidated anymore because we got a new we got a new uh, cowboy in town. Her name is uh, is uh, uh, Cam Kamala Harris, and uh, I got what? what? It's a waitress or something at Bree's, yeah. Yeah. Oh, there's a waitress with Bree. Well, the noise is coming from Bree. It's like no. Oh, I see. There we okay. go. Yeah, he's, mm -hmm. Are you in a restaurant, Bree? Yeah, okay, good. Okay. Anyway, uh, but I mean, it's just, it's, 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 it's the shame of our times. And even though they now have a new cowboy in town, they have Camelot. They, uh, they all, I think they only have to keep her happy, you know. Right. He's never going to like the normal press. He calls them the fake, pre fake news, yeah. you know. And, and uh, I, that's going to keep going on and on and on. I mean, he alienates everybody who could do him any good. You know, and It's more than alienation. I mean, remember, he actually was threatening to jail journalists in, yeah. at, at the time that 
we thought he had a real good shot of getting elected. That was scary crap for the uh, journalists. Well, you know, we could be another, uh, where is it, Bolivia, or where is that all happening now? Venezuela. Yeah. Venezuela, yeah. Yeah, the down, that's a pretty sight down there. I mean, those people are just afraid to say anything. Mm -hmm. you know. mm -hmm. Oh, there we go. She made there s'more. You Did you make enough for the rest of us? <laughs> <laughs> Oh boy! Oh, geez. You're, you're asking for it. She's going to come back. Look out! He's asking for. There we are. There's. A, there's. Mm. That's okay. Don't push her away. Let her make her faces. You know, because one day she's going to make a face, and it's going to stay that way. <laughs> <laughs> you sound like my mom. Yeah. <laughs> Actually, it does, it does happen on the internet because he's got a bad connection right now. And if she makes a face, it might stay that way. Hey, Bree, is your food better or hers? She's oh, having, I don't know. I she, can't see her. She's having a s'more. Yeah. Um, Show them to see the s'more. Yeah, s'mores are good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I didn't have s'mores. I didn't have s'mores when I was a kid. Oh, you mean? Nothing. No, I, oh, and now you feel sorry for me, Adrian? No. <laughs> <laughs> Remember when she was a little baby and you know, hopped yeah. in my lap? And she's gone and she from she, so shy. She's gone oh, from she's, she's so gone she's gone from cute and adorable to goofy. Yeah. Oh well, yeah. Like goofy. Yeah. Anyway, oh milk. Well, I wish I had some milk. Yeah, milk and crackers, yeah. That's what I should do. I should go out and buy some milk. I haven't had milk in quite a while. You know, when I, at a certain age, you stop drinking milk. Do any of you yeah. still drink milk? You're an old crowd. Mm. No, she does. Oh, she's drinking water. Oh. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. Some of us are lactose intolerant and can't drink milk. Yeah, well, I I stopped drinking milk. I don't know what age. I, I, I kept drinking it for quite a while, but then I stopped drinking it. Mm. You know. I put it on coffee. You put it. Uh, you put it. I put it in coffee. I put milk in coffee. Yeah. Or 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 a form of milk, whatever. I use it in cereal. Yes, I. It, it's free, Charlie. Lactose free. Oh, lactose free. Uh huh. Oh God, everything's like high tech. Yeah. There's nothing normal. Anymore. <laughs> Well, you know, we, you can't all, you you try enjoy, to get an egg, and where does it come from? I you don't can't know. enjoy your milk and get what kind the of animal. <laughs> yeah, it's nice to enjoy a good glass of milk and get the trots. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> oh yeah. If ever I get constipated, I know how to get rid could of. Could we please? Could we please remember that during this time it's nighttime for you, but I it's lunchtime for me. <laughs> Why every time I call in, there's got to be one of you making some comment. That completely is not appropriate during a meal time. Oh. Let's talk about <laughs> diarrhea. <laughs> Bray, you missed the boogers on the camera. <laughs> oh, that is it. That is it. Oh, I'm telling you. And, and look at her, how goofy she's getting. <laughs> oh, boy. You guys are making can, can, you give her, can you give her a show? <laughs> I'm happy. I'd be, I'd be happy to give her a show. Hmm. Would Would she want to do one? <laughs> <laughs> that would change the age demographics. So. Yeah, quite quickly. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but anyway, uh, so uh, uh, you know, I mean, things are silly here in America. It's just. Uh, and, and I, I, you know, I watched the thing tonight, and I, and I got to disagree with you, Bree. The more I was thinking about it today, the more I was thinking yeah. that you got, you know, you've got a whole democratic graphic ba democratic base who are enthusiastic right now. And the more enthusiastic they get, the more of that block is actually going to vote that wouldn't have voted before. You know, get what I'm saying? In other words, you go out, you do a poll. Well, Polls don't really count in the, you don't know that eventually those people are maybe going to say, I'm staying home, not going out and vote. You know, it's very easy because you as the people well, do, doing the 
the, the polls are coming to them. All right. Well, this is what Trump does right before he lies. Yeah. Um, yes. That, that's the, uh, what, uh, yeah. Well, but what I'm telling you, Alex, is that you, you're <laughs> where they're getting excited are not the places they need per se. You know, they need to get people excited in the places. So they're, you know, it's the choir. Well, that's coming tonight, out. tonight it was uh, Arizona. And Arizona, yeah. you need to win, and they looked uh, looked like a very excited group. There, in fact, it was the largest audience she's had so far. You know. Yeah. And and uh, all all I've got to say is all you you've got to invigorate the base. In other words, just because you've got forty percent or de let's say forty percent are Democrats, but then it's election day and it's not an exciting time for them, and only twenty percent go out and actually vote. But if you get them really excited and 40 percent of them go out and vote, then you could win the election. That's what I'm saying. I think there are going to be a lot of Republicans who stay home because they just feel they have no choice. You know, and they don't want to vote for Trump. Oh, that looks good. That looks <laughs> great. Do they do take yeah, that's out? Good. Do they do take out? Sure. <laughs> Yeah, you can see this list. Well, let me let me ask you this, Bree. Bree, let's say I asked you to order me some. I don't know. Do they have California rolls? I don't know. <laughs> sure. Thank you. They, they have California rolls. Okay, let's say they have California yeah. rolls, and I want some California rolls shipped to me from. Um, uh, uh, you're in uh, where? Kuala Lumpur. Kuala Lumpur. Right? Yeah. Uh, uh, how long would it take for you to ship those things to me? In other words, if you went by the fastest overnight. way possible, overnight. Overnight. Yeah. Okay, overnight. Yeah. Me some California rolls, and I'll uh, zell you. I'll zell <laughs> you the money. We don't have and to how long is it going to take have... you to have diarrhea? <laughs> <laughs> I've hey, sent you things before, Alex. I sent you pineapple tarts you from did. Taiwan. You did. Yes. Yeah. Mm. yeah. Didn't I send you a book? I, I mm. might have sent you a book. As, or was it just pineapple tarts? And it was, no, it was delicious, too. Because you just can't ship it. It's got to go through customs first, so it'll sit there for a couple of days. <laughs> oh, oh, yeah. Avocado is going to go bad. The avocado? Yeah. The, the avocado would go yeah. bad first. Any fish in there? Yeah, it'll go bad. Well, you could put that in ice, and then you could ship it, you know, and it would be good, and it would yeah. be lovely. But I probably could you get it from down the street, and it's just as good as it is there. Am I right? Yeah. I mean, yeah. if you went out and you bought some... It'll chicken, cost you more. Uh, oh, you're right. You're right, because you talk about how cheap stuff is there. Yeah. You know. Yeah. Yeah, the gourmet meal for about five bucks there. Oh, well, let me ask you, Bree. What are you doing now for work? Are you still teaching or doing whatever you yeah. do that way? Still okay. teaching. Still teaching. Yeah, oh. but I, I kind of do less of that now. I do more administrative stuff. Oh, okay. All right. But are you enjoying the place you're at? What it what what the what the school? Yeah, I do like it a lot. Um, you know, there there've been some ups and downs. Um, a lot of my. A lot of the expats have gone, um, and I'm still around, but I, do, I really enjoy it. My colleagues are great. I consider them friends, and some of them are, are like family to me. Where are the, in, where are the expats going? Um, a lot of them are, well, different places. I had an American colleague who went to Britain. I've got a, a um, Austrian colleague going back to Austria. Um, no different places. One guy from Britain went to Bangladesh. She's in Dhaka now. Oh. Oh, really? Okay. But now the, the American. I got a Thai friend. Who, I got a Thai friend who just moved to Melbourne. I've got a American Indian, Indian American friend uh, who just moved to the Netherlands from Singapore. Uh, British guy went back to Britain. So okay, let, me, let, me ask you this. I... let me ask you this about you expats. Okay, you and you in particular. Why don't you want to live here? No, it's not about that. Um, it's just that the way that it's 
You, you were talking to me the other day with one of your guests about coincidence or serendipity, mm -hmm. you know, yeah, and yeah, yeah. I, would, I, would, I would point to that. Um, it just so happened, you know, life is a wonderful journey and there's just a lot of people you meet along the way. Uh, sometimes weak, you know, ties or bonds that you have that end up turning into something much bigger. Um, so, so that's how it was with me. I was I was working in New York. Um, I went to school there, you know, in central New York. I was working in upstate New York. And I went to a conference and I met this woman from Singapore. And she said, oh, you know, you should consider it. Hmm. That was in 2000. Um, and then three or four years later, I met my partner to be at, from Shanghai. And then Singapore uh, had an opening. And then I thought, well, that would be, you know, closer to Shanghai. And I and what, so when I went to Shanghai, they they said we'll pay to fly you down to Singapore. I loved it there. Wow, was it a great city! And then they're like, and we're going to pay you this, and you do this. I was like, sure, you know. Uh, and that's how it, it just rolls from there. I ended up so later it, so in it's Dubai. Not, it's not that you had any uh, dislike for the United States no. or being in the United no. States or whatever. It was just that. Romance took you mm -hmm. there, jobs took you yeah. there, things like that. Yeah, exactly. Just openings. Uh, I mean, I applied back in the States, um, in, in Texas. I, I'm on the line for one there. And I was, uh, I was a runner-up for a job in Wisconsin to run their public media for the state. Mm -hmm. uh, I was going to be associate director of Wisconsin Public Media, but <laughs> I was number, I can't runner-up for that. So. Mm. Well, you yeah. dodged a bullet not coming to Texas. <laughs> <laughs> well, no, I'm still on the line for that one. Where, where, where was Adrian going? Was she leaving or something? Know, waving goodbye or something. Waving goodbye? Oh, okay. Oh, well. I... Maybe they're going down to the pool. Who knows? I mean, mm -hmm. you know, I just feel we've been left alone now. Uh, because I because I was going to ask Brian about his uh, his uh, Adrian's mother is uh, from Vietnam, mm -hmm. and uh, I think he maybe met. I have her some there. friends there right now. Yeah, and uh, I wanted to ask him how that happened, you know, and why he didn't move to Vietnam, for instance, which. I understand now is a perfectly oh there's Brian okay Brian yeah, I was I was talking about how Adrian's mother is from Vietnam, and uh, in the case of uh, of uh, Bree he has a significant other who uh, uh, was from uh, where Shang you said Shanghai Shanghai yep. yeah uh, and uh, so you moved to be with her is what happened basically right Bree. Or she kind of then moved with you. It's kind of you're in the same area. Okay. Yeah. So, so did you ever Actually, think... the world is not ready for people like us. Yeah. yeah there's just, it's just not ready. But there's so the... many issues. I, I, on the other hand, uh, br uh, br uh, uh, Brian. Brian. Uh, Brie. Brian. <laughs> Neary. Brian, whatever you want to say, that's fine. Hmm? Yeah. Brian, um, uh, you never considered moving to uh, Vietnam, did you? No. Okay. No. Fine. I, no. 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 I, no, I, no I mean, actually, how's my is my Wi-Fi okay? Yeah, your Wi-Fi is going? fine. Yeah. Yeah, it's better. Uh, right better. now, Don's on, so there goes the whole show. Oh, yeah. Man. Okay. <laughs> no. no. <clears throat> actually, I really. much time. Actually, um. Bree will probably confirm this with me too. Actually, I really like how they have their system set up. You know, they they all you know they have a lot of cars coming in now, but before it was all scooters, right? And you know, it's like how they have it. You know, they have the sort of like I guess New York. They have the the family owned business here, and then they all live up here. So everywhere you go in your scooter, around a few blocks all around, you can get everything. It's like Home Depots everywhere in these little houses yeah. and, and furniture mm -hmm. stores and just everything, right? So, um, and then you go to restaurants. And I mean, it's so much fun to hop on scooters with like five other scooters, you know, with a few people on there and just take off and follow each other. And we go to some of the food on the side. And like Bree says, I'm looking at the prices and I'm converting. I'm going, dude, we just spent like $5 for like 20 people. <laughs> and, and, and then I'm like, order double. And they said, do you want the des any desserts? And I'm like, yeah, I want one of each, you know? And, 
and it's just it's so much fun and, and uh yeah i really like the culture and how they, it's set up I, I would definitely move there if i was younger but i just get in trouble because like too, too many beautiful girls there charlie yeah, yeah. and i would move there and we'd these girls would be gonna kill us because we have too many <laughs> yeah because you have what too many girlfriends oh okay yeah because because you know, you see Asian girls. Right. You know, if you like Asian girls, you see okay, a girl right. here. But when you go there, they're like all over the place. So. <laughs> yes, they're all over the place because it's Asia. Yeah. Of course. So then I, I had to wear sunglasses all the time when I was there with her. <laughs> <laughs> Did she put on lipstick since we saw her last? No. No. Or has she had it Maybe on? Maybe she all drank something. Yeah. Okay, okay, come on. Off the Don Gill is here. See this guy in the corner there? Yeah. Isn't he scary? Look at, look at all his homework. See all those folders? He's a really busy man. Hmm. <laughs> okay, cool. If he were busy, those folders wouldn't be there. <laughs> if I were busy, I wouldn't be here. Well, mm, no, there he is. I don't have, I'll tell you where I have folders. We have folders on the floor over here because they're Marjorie's folders. She's just the folder person, you know. Uh, in spite of the fact that we have a file cabinet, you know, so whatever. I how digitize are you, everything. How are, you tonight, how are you tonight, Giller? I'm running out of dry T-shirts. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> well, the weather's been per kind of cool the last day or so. Yeah, but the humidity is like 200%. Mm -hmm. Today it didn't seem to be that. Mm -hmm. uh, all I know is that we had uh, a wind. Wind. It was. We we're on the part of the hurricane that's going through here, mm -hmm. and the wind was happening. And we got the wind, and the wind was like really a nice breeze, man. If you were sitting by the window, you got a good breeze. But you know, I imagine you haven't opened a window in twenty years, so. I, I, I have a window. <laughs> <laughs> He, he forgot where it is. It's behind that folder pile. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, no, what I see behind those folders is a monitor. So that's obviously like a monitor you don't use, right? Computer screen. It's a computer <clears throat> screen. It's, it's, from a, it's from a G4 Mac. Uh, <laughs> and the way I've got everything hooked up, I... I, I don't have the means to disconnect anything, which which is good <laughs> if someone if someone wants to rob the place, it would take them two weeks just to disconnect. Uh, I remember the, I remember the G four and here's how I remember the G four. I went on the air in San it's Francisco. It's not a G six. I went on the uh, air in San G, Francisco G4. and I and I started putting down Macintoshes, saying they look like crummy computers. So the Mac people sent me a, a G four and a monitor. Okay. So this is when two thousand. Whenever they came out, whenever they were yeah. out, maybe no. I was uh, when did I leave? When did I leave San Francisco? I left San Francisco in ninety eight, so I had it in ninety eight. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. Probably a G three, maybe. Maybe it was a G three. I, I, you know, but it was one of those. Okay. And they said we want to show you how great they are, so I, I they sent it to me. That was the worst piece of crap I've ever owned in my life. And one day, because I, I can do this, I know how to do this, I opened up the computer and looked inside. And as a insulation for the, uh, for the uh, hard drives, they had tin foil. Huh. I mean, not, not just, you know, industrial tin foil. It was like, you know, aluminum foil. That was it. Right. I mean, it was such a piece of crap. It was the worst computer ever. And I just said, can I, can I give this back to you? And they said, oh, no, you can keep it. Hmm. And so I have well, this thing sitting around doing nothing. What? 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 There's no tin foil on, on, uh, on any of my discs, so I don't know why they gave you that one. I don't know, but it was it was uh, you know the the great story I have though. There's the G four. Oh yeah, of course that's the G four. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Anyway, uh, <laughs> what happened to me once was uh, I I um, what happened was my, my newsman used to plug mm -hmm. this thing called Truly Fine Deodorant Soap, 
And eventually, the people at Truly Fine Deodorant Soap sent him a case of Truly Fine Deodorant Soap. So I said to him, if you mention a product, will they then send it to you? And he said, looks like that's what happens. So mm -hmm. I said... Boy, do I love those Macintoshes. They are the <laughs> best computers. I think I, I never, I don't have one. I have nothing but Mac, uh, but PCs. But man, I would love to have one of those. Now, I go, I, a couple of days later, I'm home and I get a call from the radio station and they say, you just got two big boxes from <laughs> Macintosh, from Apple. And I said, what does it look like? He said, well, on one it says computer, on the other one it says monitor. I went, they sent me one just because I mentioned them on the air? And they said, he said, yeah. So I said to the boss, well, what do we do? He says, well, you didn't, you didn't ask for it, okay? And uh, they sent it to you voluntarily, so I guess you can pick it up and it's yours, as long as you don't plug it on the air. Okay, and I said fine. So I rushed down to the studio because I want to pick up my Macintosh, and I got the Macintosh box with the uh, with the computer in it, and the Macintosh box with the uh, uh, with the uh, uh, monitor in it, and I brought it home and I opened it up, and inside were bars of truly fine deodorant <laughs> soap. <laughs> And the people, the people at Apple had sent me that. You know, I, I thought it was just, I, I couldn't think of anything funnier, even though I was truly disappointed. I mean, truly fine disappointed, I might add. So. Did you talk about that on the air? Oh, yeah. Oh, I never stopped with that one. I said, you got to admit, the people at Apple have a sense of humor. Yeah. yeah. Uh, but uh, mm -hmm. then years later, they sent me that one computer, and it was so terrible. It was just horrible. I never found any use for it. it what what do you think? Steve Jobs? Huh? Was Steve Jobs listen, no. Did Steve Jobs listen to your show? It, well, I have no idea. But I do know that uh, this uh, later on, this was not the Steve Jobs period of Apple. This was the, uh, what's his name, the guy yeah, that okay. used to run Coca-Cola or something. Uh, and uh, uh, they, uh, they were doing everything they could to try and boost their product, but they were building just horrible products. Then they came out with the Newton. What a bad idea that was. You know, I mean, it was a good idea, but it just was badly um, created. So, mm -hmm. you know, they were, they, they were off with that one. So, What are you using? What are you using now? I'm using a Mac. I'm using a Mac Studio. Yeah, in fact, the Mac Ultra Studio, the really powerful one. Uh oh, yep. so, yeah. But it still, it eats up a lot of memory, you know. So. Anyway, that's uh, that. That was my uh, that was my that was my story, and I'm sticking to it. Yeah. And it kind of is getting to look like we're getting towards the end of the show here, you know. Yeah. And I can play the theme, and you can all hear it. Wait a minute. Oh, here I go. Let me stop. Don it. hasn't yeah, pulled his envelope yet. <laughs> what? Hear me? Don has Don't one. Don't we up. have three minutes left? Uh, I didn't no, hear what you said. Two minutes left. Two minutes. I said Don hasn't oh. pulled his envelope yet. Uh, I'm waiting. Hasn't pulled his envelope? Oh, yeah. Pull yeah. a... From the stack. Oh, I'm waiting for the item from the stack. Randomly from the stack. Randomly. <laughs> quick. Randomly from the stack. Uh, oh, the it, pressure. It, uh, uh, yeah, the pressure. Just uh, at the top would be fine. Just something because I've only got about a minute left here. Oh, well, let's see uh, here. What's yeah. what's that? Uh, <laughs> okay, <laughs> that's what that is. Okay. Anyway, mm -hmm. hey, listen. Thank you, Jeff, for joining us tonight, and thank you, Charlie, as well as uh, uh, you know, uh, Roberta. You've been just a great addition to this program and you've been here every night too i thank you so very much for that don't don't get your expectations up <laughs> can't promise every night <laughs> uh, yeah okay uh kevin thank you so much for calling vernon Nunn, wonderful having you here brian terrific having you here what happened to the uh to the pest Oh, she's oh. over there. Okay. Oh, there I, oh, boy. That's like saying Beetlejuice three times. Anyway. And uh, thank you very much, uh, 
uh, Bree for calling us from Malaysia, and Don Giller, thank you for calling us from down the block. Big deal. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> everybody, give a big Beetle wave. Juice, Beetlejuice, Beetlejuice. Okay, everybody, 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 give a big wave goodbye, and I'll give a big wave goodbye at you. There they go, folks. That's our citizen panel for tonight. Uh, we got to get out of here because uh, 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 our good friend Amy Manuel is next. She's here with the intersection. You can call her at GabNet Live on Skype. I'll see you on Monday at the uh, uh, pop-up show. That'll be on uh, Facebook. And then we'll see you again next uh, Wednesday. Same time, same station in life. In the meantime, at the, uh, if you see her, you know, tell her I love her, okay? Bye-bye, everybody. Have a nice weekend.